हेलो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू सी इसेंट्रिकली लोडेड वेडेड जॉइंट नाउ लेट अस कंसीडर हियर लेट अस से दिस इज अ प्लेट टू दिस प्लेट अ सर्कुलर पाइप इज वेल्डेड ओवर हियर नाउ एट दिस लोकेशन वी कैन सी वेल्डिंग लेट अस से इट इज वेल्डेड एट दिस लोकेशन द प्लेट एंड सर्कुलर पाइप आर वेल्डेड हियर इट इज वेल्डिंग प्रोवाइडेड हियर राइट नाउ दिस इज अ वेल्डिंग नाउ लेट अस से ऑन दिस सर्कुलर पाइप एड सम इसेंट्रिसिटी ई द फोर्स पी इज अप्लाइड नाउ हियर can you just imagine here this force p will rotate this element as well as will bend this element see here this force p into e because of this link extra link this p into e is acting as a torque right means on this element let us say this is a element let us say this is a pipe on this pipe this p into e is acting as a torque like this there will be a torque which is nothing but p into e as well as this p will bend this element like this the p will bend this element means and bending moment is nothing but can i say this p we can put here right now if i remove this link let us say if i want to remove this link that is p into e then i have to put here moment therefore the force can be directly we can put here but along with this force the moment created by this force which is nothing but torque here torque is equal to p into e that also we have to put and which will try to rotate the total body right it is trying to rotate the body in clockwise direction right therefore here torque is equal to p into e now can you say here this p into length l this is acting as a bending moment the beam is going to bend like this because of this p into l the beam is going to bend like this right beam is going to bend like this therefore this p into l is acting as a bending moment therefore there is a bending moment of magnitude p into l right now as well as that means if i want to put bending moment on this element now let us say if i zoom this portion then i will get let us say there is a welding let us say this is a very small plate or sorry small welding here at welding there is a torque t right there is a torque t as well as there is a bending moment there is a bending moment m which is trying to rotate uh, trying to bend and there is a direct force p also there is a direct force p also right means here there is torque also which is nothing but p into e there is bending moment also which is nothing but p into l as well as there is direct shear force which is nothing but p means there are three loadings here in this case there are three types of loading that is number one is torque or torsional shear stress due to torque there is a torsional shear stress there is a bending moment therefore there will be a bending stress and there is a direct shear force right therefore because of direct shear force there will be a direct shear stress which is nothing but tau 1 is equal to p d by area this is direct shear stress or we can say primary shear stress direct shear stress or primary shear stress again because of torque there will be a secondary shear stress that is t by j is equal to tau by r is equal to g theta by l as per this equation this tau is equal to torsional shear stress is equal to t by j into r we can say means there is torsional shear stress also torsional shear stress also right and because of bending moment we can use m by i is equal to sigma b by y is equal to e by r this bending equation therefore there will be bending stress also m by i into y means the welded joint here the welded joint is subjected to both direct shear stress tau 1 torsional shear stress tau as well as bending stress and we have to design for all these all these together now let us consider another case let us say there is a one plate over which another plate is welded this is a welding at this location and at this location welding is done for length l on one side and again length l on another side and load is eccentric at distance e from the centroid of these two weldings means let us say here there is a welding at this location let us say this is a welding upper side welding and there is a lower side welding right 
Now for these two weldings, centroid will be at center, right? The centroid will be somewhere here, right? Therefore, this G is a centroid or center of gravity of these two weldings. And from this G, the load is at distance E, where E is called eccentricity. Now can you say this load P, we can directly put at G, but along with this force, we have to transfer the moment created by that force. Therefore, here at G, there will be a moment of magnitude P into E and this moment is acting as a twisting moment because this moment is trying to rotate the other plate. Therefore, it is acting as a twisting moment which is called a torque. Therefore, the force directly we can put at G, right, this will be the force, but along with this force, we have to transfer the moment created that is torque is equal to P into E. Therefore, here there are two types of loading. That is, it is subjected to direct load. It is a direct shear load. P is a direct shear load. And T, which is nothing but P into E, is a torsion or torque. Torsion or torque or twisting moment. Therefore, because of direct shear load P, there will be a direct shear stress. Tau, let us say tau 1 is direct shear stress or primary shear stress, which is nothing but P divided by area. Right. This is called primary shear stress because of direct force, primary shear stress, because of direct force. And because of torque, there will be torsional shear stress, which is nothing but tau, T by J is equal to tau by R. Therefore, torsional shear stress, let us say this is tau 2. Tau 2 is equal to T by J into R. It is called torsional shear stress, which is called secondary shear stress. Secondary shear stress. Now here, these plates or this welded joint is subjected to primary shear load because of direct shear force P as well as secondary shear load because of torsional moment. Now let us do the analysis. Now let us consider here this is the upper side welding of length L. Here lower side welding of length L. Right. And here G is the centroid of this welding. Center of gravity of these two weldings. CG of these two weldings. Right. And at G there is a direct force P is acting as well as torque of magnitude P into E. Torque of magnitude P into E is also acting in clockwise direction. Here we can say clockwise direction. Right. Now, therefore, to balance this primary shear load, to balance this P, there will be equal and opposite P in the welding. And to balance this torque, there will be equal and opposite torque in this welding. Right. Therefore, divide them separately. Now, if I consider primary shear load P, let us say here in this welding, if I consider only primary shear load, right. Let us say this is the top welding, this is the bottom welding. Let us say thickness of welding is T. Let us say thickness of welding is, let us say here T1. Here I am assuming thickness of welding is T1 and length of welding is given L. Length of welding is given L, right. Now there is a direct shear load which is of magnitude P, right. Now to resist this direct shear load, there will be a equal and opposite resistance in the welding. There will be an equal and opposite resistance in the welding of magnitude P. Right. Therefore, there will be a direct shear stress because of this direct loading. Therefore, again, if I consider torsional plus, here we have considered the effect of direct shear stress plus, if I consider length of welding is L. If I consider torsion, let us say here torsion, I am considering torsion. Right. For this welding, Right. At G, there is a torque T acting. Right. Now, let us consider for these weldings, for these weldings, the distance of G from the shortest distance is R1. Let us say the shortest distance of weld from the G will be R1. Let us say this much distance is R1. We are considering R1. And let us say this distance, the extreme point is at radius R. Let us say the extreme point is at radius r. Now, to balance this clockwise torque, always there will be a reaction at extreme point. There will be a reaction at extreme point. See, this is the extreme point which is r. Extreme points are at radius r. Extreme points are at radius r. And on this welding, there is a torque which is acting in clockwise direction. Right. Means here I can say r1 is definitely less than r. Because R is distance of extreme point from the G and R1 is distance of nearest point from the G. Right. Now, now to balance this torque, at extreme point, there will be a opposite torque. 
which is nothing but therefore there will be a secondary shear stress c like this and it is perpendicular to radius or not tau 2 there will be tau 2 tau 2 tau 2 which is perpendicular to radius tau 2 like this secondary shear stress perpendicular to radius and now see this secondary shear stress is creating moment in clockwise direction uh, anti clockwise direction to balance this clockwise torque right now this is how there will be a primary shear load and secondary shear load now let us calculate their values now can i say in the first case the primary shear load will be equal to tau 1 will be equal to force do you have a area which is nothing but tau 1 is equal to force do you have a area now see what is the area of first weld there is t1 into l but at upper also t1 into l there are two t1 into l na? means area is 2 t1 into l this will be the area therefore this is a primary shear load this is primary shear load right again there will be a secondary shear load here there will be a secondary shear load also tau 2 which is nothing but the secondary shear load is given by torsional equation which is nothing but t by j is equal to tau 2 by r right here we have to use radius in secondary shear load we have to use radius here because at radius r it is acting r right therefore tau 2 is equal to t by j into r now here this is secondary shear load secondary shear load now here our target is to find j that is polar moment of inertia here j is polar moment of inertia and distance of r that is distance of extreme point from the center or g from the g right now if i combine them together let us say combine this primary shear which is nothing but tau 1 here tau 1 tau 1 combine this primary shear and secondary shear then we will get now on extreme points let us say this is extreme point these are the extreme points because extreme points will be having maximum radius therefore there will be a maximum sh secondary shear stress which is nothing but at maximum radius there will be a maximum torque therefore there will be a maximum shear stress right now here there is a primary shear load which is vertically upward which is tau 1 at each and every point there is a primary shear load tau 1 tau 1 primary shear stress tau 1 right and as as at each and every point there will be a secondary shear load which will be perpendicular to radius in the clockwise direction like this there will be tau 2 like this there will be tau 2 like this there will be a tau 2 right perpendicular radius tau 2 perpendicular to radius this secondary shear stress is perpendicular to the radius right tau 2 and here tau 1 primary shear stress is tau 1 and secondary shear stress is tau 2 right and secondary shear stress is perpendicular to radius secondary shear stress is perpendicular to the radius now my dear students at these corner points let us say corner points let us say this is the first corner point second corner point third corner point and fourth corner point now at these four corner points we can say there is secondary shear stress also as well as primary shear stress there is tau 1 and tau 2 also here it is tau 1 it is tau 1 right there is primary shear load as well as secondary shear load and angle between them is let us say at corner 1 there is a theta 1 at corner 2 there is a theta 2 this angle is theta 2 at corner 3 this angle is theta 3 at corner 4 there is angle theta 4 angle between tau 1 and tau 2 right now we have to find resultant of them now as per law of parallelogram the resultant will lie in between them this is a, let us say this is a resultant right at location 1 resultant at location 1 here resultant at location 2 resultant at location 2 here there will be a resultant shear stress at location 3 and there will be a resultant shear stress at location 4 right now this resultant as per law of parallelogram already we have seen in bolted joint that this resultant finding is nothing but let us say if i consider joint 1 if i consider uh, corner 1 then at corner 1 there is upward tau 1 and tau 2 like this and tau 2 like this right and angle between them is theta 1 then if i want to find resultant at corner 1 this is equal to under root of as per law of parallelogram tau 1 square plus tau 2 square 
plus 2 tau 1 tau 2 cos theta 1 cos theta 1 now here can i say as theta decreases cos theta goes on increasing therefore resultant shear stress goes on increasing therefore the the corner having minimum theta is critically loaded is critically loaded because at corner having minimum theta there will be a maximum cos theta value and there will be a maximum shear stress value because of this maximum shear stress it is called as critically loaded right and failure will start from this critical point right now here for corner 1 and corner 4 theta is minimum right that is here we can say theta 1 is equal to theta 4 due to symmetry and theta 2 is equal to theta 3 due to symmetry but theta 1 is less than so uh, theta 1 is less than theta 2 right that is theta 4 is less than theta 3 likewise also we can write therefore corner 1 and corner 4 are critically loaded are critically loaded therefore we have to design these critically loaded corners right and how to find primary shear load that we have seen primary shear load is equal to force divided by area and secondary shear load is equal to torque divided by j into r right t by j into r now for these plates plate uh, for sorry for these welds weld upper weld and lower weld we have to find j finding j is very important so we will see how to find this j so we will see how to find polar moment of inertia j for these top and bottom welds now let us consider only top weld that is weld 1 for this weld thickness is t length is l and the centroid or center of gravity of this weld will be at location G1, right? G1 is center of gravity of weld 1, right? Now, about this G1, we can calculate Ixx and Iyy. Now, about Xx axis, let us say this is a Xx axis. If I want to find Ixx, what, how to find? Ixx is equal to L into T cube divided by 12, right? Because Xx is cutting T if thickness is cut we have to cube this thickness and l into t cube divided by 12 now if i want to find i y y let us say about y y axis this is a y y axis now here y y axis cuts the length therefore we have to l cube we have to make l cube therefore we can say i y y is equal to t l cube divided by 12 and this polar moment of inertia for first about g1 here we are considering about g1 right j about j1 right g1 point that is centroid of uh, first weld right is nothing but can i say i x x plus i y y this is a polar moment of uh, inertia which is nothing but l t cube divided by 12 plus t l cube divided by 12 and my dear students this thickness is very very small thickness is very small that we can ignore very small therefore its cube will be very very small very very small which can be ignored which can be ignored therefore here this term that is l t cube divided by 12 becomes very small which can be ignored right therefore j about g1 is equal to t l cube divided by 12 see all these how to find polar moment of inertia how to find i x x i y y that already we, you have seen in in any mechanics topic right therefore here i am only quickly revising the things right this will be i about g1 but my dear students my target is to find about g because torque is acting about g now i have to shift this i g1 to the i g right and distance between them this distance is called y which is in the word r1 right therefore as per parallax theorem j about g is equal to j about g1 plus area into y square this is a parallax theorem therefore j about g is equal to j g1 plus area what will be the area of weld that is t into l right this will be the area of the weld t into l into y square y square is r square r1 square right therefore put the values j g is equal to t l cube divided by 12 plus t into l r1 square right now t into l is the area therefore j g will become area into l square because t 1 t 
into L is area divided by 12 plus area into R1 square. Therefore, J about G point is equal to area common L square by 12 plus R1 square. This is for only one weld. My dear students, this is polar moment of inertia of one weld only. One weld, right. But there is also another weld of bottom. At bottom also there is another weld. Therefore, we can say we have to calculate of these also and for bottom weld also the GJ will come as same formula that is area into L square by 12 plus R1 square. Therefore, accordingly calculate for all the welds. Here there are only two welds. Here there are only two welds. Therefore, this J will be equal to summation of all gj right summation of all these polar moment of inertia about g point therefore let us say j1 is equal to jg that is for first weld about g point that is polar moment of inertia about g point is nothing but area into l square by 12 plus r1 square right similarly for second weld it will be j2 it will, due to symmetry it will be same L square by 12 plus R1 square. Similarly, if there are more welds, calculate J3, J4 and total J will be summation of all. J1 plus J2 plus J3 plus J4 and so on. Thank you dear students. In next lecture, we will see numerical on this topic.